Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about the HPA axis, also known as the hypothalamal pituitary adrenal axis. Okay. Uh, the hypothalamal pituitary adrenal axis is a neuroendocrine loop that acts like this. It begins from the hypothalamus. This region is known as the hypothalamus. Okay, because it is just below the hypothalamic sulcus. This is the roughly the hypothalamic sulcus. So it's just below that. It is part of the diencephalon. So hypothalamus is uh, known as the head ganglion of the sympathetic or the autonomic system. This name was given by Sherrington. It is the head of all the uh, autonomic responses. That is the meaning of that word. This is called head ganglion. So if you consider hypothalamus, hypothalamus is going to secrete on a stress impulse, uh, stress stimuli towards the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is going to secrete uh, a hormone and that hormone is known as the CRH, corticotrophin releasing hormone. It's also known as corticotrophin releasing factor. Remember that this is going to make the pituitary release another hormone. That's why it is called corticotrophin releasing hormone. So releasing hormones and inhibiting hormones are characteristic uh, secretions of the hypothalamus. And it will specifically act on the pituitary. As you know, this is the pituitary gland. It's a small P-shaped gland uh, located in the cella tersica. And in the pituitary, it specifically acts on the anterior pituitary. That is the place that I'm shading now. And it acts on the anterior pituitary and specifically the corticotrophs and that will secrete the adrenocorticotrophic hormone ACTH. So the first hormone that is released in HPA axis is the corticotrophin releasing hormone and the second is the adrenocorticotrophic hormone. And the ACTH will act on the adrenal gland as you know adrenal gland is located just above the kidney it is a, a triangular shaped roughly a triangular shaped gland if i uh, balloon up the adrenal gland over here okay adrenal gland actually contains an outer yellowish cortex and an inner medulla so this specifically acts on the cortical aspect it specifically acts on the cortex that's why uh, it is known as adrenocorticotrophic hormone and the cortex is going to secrete the hormone called cortisol and that is the hormone that is released on an acute stress on a stress response to the brain the hpa axis will activate the release of the cortisol hormone from the cortex of the adrenal gland and uh, interestingly, the cortisol hormone is a glucocorticoid. Glucocorticoid is a product of the adrenal cortex. And the cortisol will interestingly negatively inhibit the release of uh, the CRH and the, or the CRF. So it is going to cause a negative feedback loop. So this is the entire loop of the HPA axis. So when you have a stress response, which is basically from uh, impulses come from the brain and head towards the uh, hypothalamus and cause the release of corticotrophin, uh, corticotrophin releasing hormone, which will in turn secrete the ACTH and ACTH is going to uh, make the adrenal cortex secrete cortisol, which will negatively uh, reduce the production of CRH. This is a normal healthy HPA axis, but the HPA axis is prone for dysfunction. It can act more, it can act less. If it acts less, then cortisol release will be impeded. It can cause an HP axis uh, dysfunction. It can cause an insufficiency of the HP axis and cause an Addisonian crisis uh, or an adrenal insufficiency. Alternatively, it can cause an increase. If the HP axis is increasingly sensitive, then you can have an increased amount of cortisol in the blood and that can cause various uh, dysfunctions in the body. So that's why HP axis is very important. Uh, it can affect in a lot of diseases. Uh, and also this is also implicated in how body responds to external steroids. If you uh, take more steroids, that is going to suppress the HPA axis due to this because cortisol is going to negatively suppress the uh, hypothalamus. So this is a very important uh, loop, neuroendocrine loop in our body, and that is called the HPA axis. So we'll uh, summarize again. This is the prefrontal cortex, for example, that is going to give impulses towards the hypothalamus. It's going to secrete CRF and act on the pituitary gland 
anterior pituitary to produce ACTH. It acts on adrenal gland producing cortisol and it causes a negative feedback to suppress the release of the corticotrophin releasing hormone.